so that everybody can get something to eat before the choir committee begins. And I'll do my best to facilitate that if we can. And um, so um, we'll uh, start with the, um, I don't know if there's any new letters of business that anyone has about. Um, Except the minutes. Um, in the minutes, uh, we can we've got the draft here, yes. I read them, I love Yeah, we do, yeah. Everybody had a chance to look at the minutes and is there anyone that would like to make a motion to adopt the theory that I'm saying we accept them as presented. Okay. So, a motion to minutes. Second. Hey, you good with the minutes? Yeah. All right. Okay. So, those are approved. Is Christy coming? Oh, sorry. Christy won't be joining us today. Okay. She has a um, backpack and catch. I'll circle back with you afterwards. Okay. But uh, yeah, she won't be joining us today. Okay. She delegated. Yeah. She'll be yeah, delegated to the manager. Okay. Okay. So first item is deliverables, update key metrics for the presentation um, for um, the uh, tax out, tax implications, and the tax impacts uh, of April fourth. And I think Matt, you've been in touch with uh, Joe Patera to discuss the basic framework for this um, process to make uh, these estimates. And um, I think if you could maybe just go over the elements that you covered with, with Joe, and then I'll follow up with just a couple of data points that I think we just need to be clear on. Did you get numbers from uh, Araman yet? You were supposed to get them on the 27th? I got those just a little bit ago. <clears throat> okay. Um, but uh, I'm supposed to have the final, like, Firmer numbers tomorrow. Right? Okay. And so, so 29th. Yeah, the 29th. Yeah. So that, I think they're on target to sort of present that or deliver that tomorrow. Uh, as soon as I receive that, that's going right from my inbox, right to Joe Picard's inbox. Uh, I spoke with Joe a couple of times and circled back with him on this uh, item. He, uh, as soon as he has it, he'll be prepared to do debt service and do that. He's also looking at our, uh, our swim space expenses. And I asked him to work on that under like a five year lease purchase type bond uh, for, for that item. Uh, because we're, we own them regardless one way or the other, but I figured that would be the easiest way to syndicate those costs. And it uh, seemed like that lined up with what this, um, our bond council had, had indicated as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but Joe, as soon as he has it, he'll do that, that service. And then I also uh, shared with him the article that we have uh, on net present value and, uh, and dollar cost for it to afford these. Once he gets those numbers, he's got to start to put those in to try to reflect that as a net present value uh, uh, evaluation or analysis that he's, he's prepared to do that side. Um, and then he'll, he'll read that article and see what else he can put in for additional analysis to expand that, uh, that uh, offering. And he's also going to come next Tuesday at four for our follow up, uh, our, our other finance. So he'll be at that meeting on the second? Yeah, he'll physically be here on, uh, on the second. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So I figured I, he's, he's at the he his house in Newcastle. Mm -hmm. He said, Well, yep, I can be up there for four nine on our problem. And we can go through that. And I said, Well, I said, it'll be good. Should we have a conversation with the committee over, you know, the different analyses and, you know, the weight of one versus the other? I said, I think it'll be really good for the finance mm -hmm. committee. Do, sorry, um, do we have a time for that meeting in the second? Is it already set? It's yeah, at four? Four o'clock. Okay, so we've got the seven. Yeah, we'll, we'll get that. Uh, oh. Mike, I'm putting you in right now. Thanks, sorry, I missed you. And uh, so I think uh, he's, he's up to speed with everything he needs to do on, on my end of it for deliverables. Uh, as uh, we were talking, uh, Chris and I were talking the other day, our budget's complete. So yeah. that's a great that's a great thing from the town side of it. So now that once I have those front numbers, my task will be to work hard on taking those numbers. Once I have Joe's debt service, plugging that in immediately and having that ready for the fourth for presentations on the impact on the tax tax rates and then evaluation and uh, application impact on the tax rate and then on uh, impact on the median 
in uh, home values as well. So we'll have that ready for ready for four. Right. If I get back to the man, have it uh, a rough draft for the second, I'll have that too. But, uh, but we should be able to line all that up. A lot of that's plug and play now. We're going to have it before the fourth. Yes, yeah. Yeah, to post it. Yeah, sorry. And then ready for, for presenting on the fourth, but posting will, I want to have it ready by Wednesday. Okay. So you can get it up there. It'll be in your presentation on yeah, the Wednesday. Yeah, I want to have it. I want to have the deliverable already posted the day before, right. just because uh, I think. I want to see it on the second. You might see a draft on the second. If I have it, draft have it. on the second, yeah. that yeah. would be great. That, that, that's my plan too. On that side, I know I can get that five times. Just as long as they have, you know, Joe, that's what's pretty good. Uh, and as soon as I have that, that part, I can put that in. So we should be good. Right. Well, I just have a few points of discussion just for the record. And, uh, in, in regard to the data inputs for Mr. Katera's analysis, one is that you do now have a settled number for the uh, total taxable property tax base that you're going to be able to give them. That's you now have that in hand. Yeah, we have we have a conservative estimate that I think will improve. We'll know. For right now, yes. Okay. Let me let me let me give you this direct answer first. That I that, that qualified after that. The direct answer is yes. Uh, we do have that. Mm -hmm. uh, ready for ready for prime time for next week and then clint's been doing all of his uh you know all of his work to, with the revaluation hearings mm -hmm. uh when we get closer to i know when we get to the uh you know later when we, when we come back to talking to the council and later this summer after we get to, to you know once there's one selected project ready to go we'll, we'll be even closer to having a, a, a cement number Meaning that his hearings will be over. We'll have a commitment number that uh, that he'll go to taxes with, and we'll know that there won't be any more of a uh, of a fluctuation and uh, as there is now because he's still doing the preliminary hearings. So I've been a little conservative on the overall gross value for the town, mm -hmm. knowing that between when you deliver the original assessment increase notices. So when you finally get to commitment, there's some swing that happens due to corrections and you know in, in values that, that may take place uh, from the informal hearing. It's not going to go below where it was, that I know. Yeah. And so that that municipal valuation is going to be greater than what I've used so far. So right now we're in a safe number. That number will only improve as we get more uh, higher and higher level of confidence in that as we get close to commitment. And then by the time that we go to the council level, we'll have a really good number uh, for approval and then we start to push out the questions to the voters. So then it'll be commitment will happen at that point. So that can, that's only going to get sharper and sharper, as I've said, uh, going forward. Are we still at around 3.8? 3.9. 3.9. Yeah, right. So we'll be providing the total property tax base, the mill rate, and, and the uh, median yeah. you know, yeah. for yeah. the analysis. Yeah. Okay. And then that impact on uh, um, that, you know, project A, or, sorry, sorry, B, C, and E, and uh, uh, those impacts on those, and uh, we'll have that ready, ready to go. And then with, with two tranches, this kind of what we're looking at as far as, uh, right. as, far as distribution of, of, of uh, of bonding, so that'll be right. We'll have that under that model still, too. Right. Are we using 1079 as the mill rate, or I think I was using 1071 on the last one. 1070 so I may refine that too for Tuesday. I may look at may look at 11 just to be on the conservative I, side. I would look at 11. I, yeah, because 10 we wouldn't commit at 1071 anyway because you never commit with an uneven, yeah, uneven, you know, you wouldn't do an odd penny. So you would go to the. Mm -hmm. I, I do eleven. Yeah, I think it's probably safer, safer bet. You know, just in regarding the the two tranches, uh, just to recap the committee's consensus on that, that that was the desired goal. However, uh, market conditions could require a different approach. I mean, for example, we could be in a market with very rapidly rising interest rates and a single tranche might make sense. So I just want to put that caveat in so people understand that this could change. But the point in going to two tranches was to split the cost over two fiscal years and therefore the tax impacts would be diminished accordingly for each of those two years. And if that's feasible, then that's the preferred way to go. And I think we 
there's several on that as a consensus uh, on the committee, and that's the data point that Joe would use in his analysis. And, and the converse is true too, Larry. We can maybe by doing two, we can also take advantage of you've got a stable interest rate market to decline in the following year. We can take advantage of that too, as in like this year being one of those where it's kind of iffy, you know, if we're going to stay the same or drop. So if we get to that point, we could. We can tell it either way, so it, it gives us our best ability to strike uh, when we need to with whatever we have on the flexibility. Yeah, I have a question. You guys with the number for you can help me. Um, because we have um, uh, new construction and renovation uh, in really all of the options. So, and my understanding, tell me if I'm wrong that the renovation isn't a 30 year. Right. And right. so when when Joe does this work, he will know the percentage of new construction and the percentage of um, renovation yeah. in order to put the models together based on, is it 20 and 30? 20 and 30, yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, that's precisely my next item. <laughs> I just want to be clear that we need the deliverable from Harriman on, on those totals for breaking out renovation costs and new construction for, exactly. for uh, B, C, and E. And, and so um, I don't know if we have a Harriman representative here, but Lisa had provided we that. Got, we got but this we, we do have a job, but Lisa had provided that um, for the last analysis. So it does mean updating that. And, and I would say that we do have that record. It's in our, it's in the, Cost from the estimate from the estimator he came today and it's working out. Oh, great. Right. For all the options. Okay. It's like work for the new construction, renovations, and repairs, which you would cause renovations. Yeah. So the swing space is also can be bonded, from what I understand. Oh, and no. so that would be a yeah. short bond. We do that probably, probably in a five year at least purchase type of item just yeah. because the, uh, the Economic life on that is less than okay. the other projects that you're looking at. So you're putting that yeah. by. I've actually talking to two brokers that manage those now because we're looking at it for the projects. And not that it helps us now, but they have they have an inventory that they weren't expecting. So mm -hmm. an inventory. Oh yeah. And and yeah. So they're seeing prices come down a little bit because they've got this inventory. Yeah, where good. it's going to be a year and a half from now or a year from now, who knows? But um I spoke to the owners of both of them and they said, yeah, it was but yeah. not a problem getting it. Awesome. Another data point question, only because I want to know all my data yeah. elements. Um, so our median house value is going to be 730, 750? I think it was 730. Okay. I think that's still okay. That's still that's still viable. I think that's still yeah, that, that's actually higher than the preliminary estimate of the last September. Yeah, yeah. yeah and that, I pulled that from you know, working with Clint on that, but I think that's a that's a good amount. Um, if there's any deviation, it may we may see a little bit, but not a great great amount. Yeah. Here's my next question: Is we talked about uh, uh, the tax calculator? At what point are we going to make that a live entity? Because I, this is just my opinion. You guys can tell me if I'm way off base. That as people are looking at the options we're putting out there, they might want that calculator. Yes, I agree. We can add so, that to the website easily once we have the formulas. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. So you, Christy was working on the calculator. Right. Christy has to be the one who says, okay, Michael, here you go. Right. Yeah. And we'll, we'll turn that into some simple code and get that live on the website once we have the, uh, the, the, the calculator. Yes. Yeah. Will the okay. calculator um, be able to break it down by all the different uh, divisions? We have it broken down in the flyer right now, i.e. by month, et cetera. I don't see why not. Yeah, yeah, it can maybe be done by year yeah. and by month. That's yeah. not a problem. It's very simple yeah. we, because we have fixed data points and we just uh, put in the inputs of the value of the home, mm -hmm. look it up, you know, and we'll have a link. Yeah. Will, will the assessor's database be up to date and accessible by the public with the new valuations? Because it depends on that. Yeah. I mean, um, if that's not available and it's the old valuation, then it isn't going to work. I thought it was 
It's it's available, but I'm not uh, I'm not sure if it's live on the website. That's all. How okay, it out I, but it may be on the. I I just don't know. I know on the envision side of it. That was two different areas. You've got the the new assessing online database that he's using, which I think is live. That's through the uh, the PGA properties stuff that he's using. Yeah, I think that's live. It's the other stuff that pushes it, like on the envision side that we traditionally had used. That's usually historical. So I'll just make sure that we can. I just need to. I just need to find out where. I'm gonna tell you just lost me, but as no, long as the calculator fine. works yeah. and the data is online. Yeah. Is it? And... Is, I'm sorry. I'm going to... <laughs> yeah. Is that's pretty right simple. Is it pretty simple? Okay. Usually it's, it's search by name or location. Yeah. Or your street. You can just yeah. put a street in. I know the current one allows that. Yeah. That's pretty standard. And usually they got a drop down box that shows all the streets in the town alphabetically. Yeah. So that's the way the current database works. If some, we have to have the new data, obviously, right. for this to be viable. If some people are computer savvy and they're not into computers, how can they do it? They really can't. You call a friend. Yeah, call, call a friend. Yeah. 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 We'll, Take just we'll, a second to look it up. Yeah. We'll yeah. make it super simple. We'll put yeah. in. Your your put in your valuation, and that's it basically. Yep. And everything else will display pretty simply. Yeah, they could have had it on that piece of paper. And, and maybe another way to do it. I'm just thinking. I mean, it's also playing online, but maybe in a future communication, if you if you do a direct mailer, uh, thinking that you, know, you want to do hard copy, you can put you can put the steps into it. You could be like blank times this rate equals your increase. Okay. This increase divided by 12 equals your monthly increase. Yeah. So if your person can act, you know, it's like you want to make it so a person can, if they, if they don't, if they're not computer comfortable, they can take that, they can take their number of what they know their assessment okay, is, cool. put it in, and just grab their calculator and multiply it by this okay. number. So we can, those are, we can work around that. I think okay. the pencil, pencil technology still is. No, there is, people that <laughs> still are. So, yeah. Okay, were there any further points of discussion on the tax impacts analysis? Anyone online have any comments regarding the tax impact analysis? I guess I just wanted, I had a quick clarification for timeline based off of this morning's um, communications meeting. Um, we we would really love to have some type of long-term impact in the flyer that we put out. And it sounds like that's tied to Joe Katera's analysis. Um, sorry, it's kind of hard to hear online. I just, does it sound like that's going to be put together in time for us to turn it around for the mailer? Yes. I think so, Caitlin, because I think that's part of what part of the work that I'll be doing on there. It'll be, you know, we can, we can stretch that out five, 10 years, I think, you know, just promoting that out there as we did before. So I think. I think yes, what so. Caitlin's talking about is more like if you go with option B, the assumption is in 10 years, you'll need to do this. And if you go yes. with option C in five or 10, whatever the numbers are. Exactly. Right. If you go with option E, you know, in 10 years, you need to repair the such and such or yeah. something. So, you know, for me, people to make informed decisions. I think that sounds like a, like a uh, Chuck and Elisa question. Yeah. We, should, we, we should discuss that tonight. Um, that said, at minimum, and I think Caitlin had an idea this morning, is at minimum we could at least list future projects that we're putting off if we go with one of the three, with each of the three options. We're making trade-offs. And here's yeah. the, the trade-offs. And whether we have, it would be great if we have numbers. If we don't, at least we should show what those trade-offs are. I think we can articulate this in a narrative way, but in order to avoid any accusations of, you know, hyperbole, it would be nice to at least have some type of, uh, you know, expert verification of, of whatever narrative we put together. Right. Well, this is our next item, you know, just to go over the concepts that we're discussing with, uh, with Mr. Katera. And again, uh, Matt had a conversation with him we had um, asked um, the, our representatives from Erie and Harriman, they could provide us with 
the initial model and, and template for the analysis that was done initially on the seven options, but we're really just starting from scratch since it wasn't really a complete model that could be supplied to us. So Mr. Gutierrez is going to be really taking this you know, from the bottom up. We're not gonna be working off of much here other than assumptions need to be made for the data inputs. I mean, for example, Harriman used a 4% inflation rate for each year going out, whatever it was, 30, 40 years. And you know, this is one of the great problems in trying to come up with a long-term cost analysis because no one's gonna be able to tell you when inflation is gonna be in three years, let alone 30. And so you end up with these massively, you know, inflated numbers, yes, and but they become meaningless at some point unless you can, you know, figure out how to discount things such as net present value and also what is known as constant dollars. In other words, what will a, a package of dollars buy net in 10 years compared to now? And that's one of the data parameters that I, I wanted to actually have Matt bring up on the screen to discuss, but um, in any case, Matt, when you went over some of these inputs with, with Joe, could you just cover some, some of those that you think are, are needed to put into this model? I think what he's looking at doing is trying to look at the net present value, like once he gets those hard numbers and then just forecasting out where that's going to be. And I think what he'll end up doing is he'll have to, he'll have to figure out or determine and explain what he's using for a discount rate because that's really the critical component that's going to have. So within that, I think your, <clears throat> your uh, inflation, uh, your inflation, uh, sorry, uh, what you think, what you think future inflation is going to be or what's your projection? Project, yeah, thanks, Larry. I was having a mm -hmm. moment there. Uh, but your inflation projection is going to be over that term. So if you're looking at ten, this, the, if you say a 10 year term, which is probably the best, case scenario that you want to find out because it start after you get beyond 10 it starts to get I would the to deteriorate. Right. I th I think that when we get into things like net present value, I, I'm not discounting how it's important for us to understand this from a finance perspective, but I think when we're talking about how to communicate it to the community, you're we're going to lose people by getting really heavily in the weeds on those type of concepts. I think at some point, people are going to understand, well, you're, we're going to need a comparable investment in 20 years to deal with this school. We're going to need a, you know, a significant renovation. You know, like we're never going to be able, as, as all of you have said, to predict things out you know, with precise accuracy once we start getting out into decades. But we can predict out kind of people understand right now the burden that building a new school is going to put on the town. So being like another new school is going to come down the line in 25 years. Maybe we don't have the exact value, but maybe instead of getting hung up on the numbers being exact, we start thinking about it more, as Michael kind of said earlier, as, as projects, because we've done a lot of cost estimating on what these types of projects would cost today, and people can math out however they want to math out. Well, that actually feeds into the concept of real dollars or constant dollars. This is a data point that's uh, maintained by the U.S. Department of Labor, Bureau of Labor Statistics. And it's a pretty simple concept. What it does is it just takes your current dollars and it looks back, say, a decade and compares those dollars back then to now. And because of the dy dynamic growth in the American economy, a basket of dollars 10 years ago adjusted for inflation today buys more, not less, buys more. And that's because of increases in productivity. And we're gonna continue, I believe, our American economy will continue to be a very progressive and dynamic economy. But with the original Harriman analysis, none of this was considered. So we were looking at costs being escalated at 4%, but we weren't looking at the income side that pays for those costs. That, that, also, that, was, that, that, that became, I think, a problem in also just coming up with a reasonable estimate of these costs. 
In any case, um, we've made that uh, data available. And I'm sure Mr. Kutera is very familiar with the concept of real and constant dollars. And we'll see if that makes sense to be integrated into this analysis along with net present value. I found that pretty easy to understand once I read the <laughs> descriptions, but initially I went, hmm, and, uh, but that made a lot of sense. Well, it does. Okay. Just think of things like a big screen TV. Just five years ago, you were spending $3,000 for one, and now you can get them for a grant. And, you know, these are the things that are going on in the American economy and yeah. the worldwide economy that are actually allowing us, despite inflation, to actually have an increase in the real value or the, or the real dollars. And you have to take this into account because otherwise you're just looking at the expense side and you're not looking at the capacity to pay for those expenses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which should be dish, 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 and I know I won't defend what happened previous time, but I'll say um, in our world, 99% of the time, we provide you, the, the, the architect and ourselves, will provide you costs in today's dollars with an escalation and inflation value added to that to move forward. Right. We won't get into what your buying power is right. over that given right. right. We don't do, do that. We we get out yeah. of time and so right. you guys do that. And I'm glad you do that. Yeah. A lot of times we work in don't bring it to that extreme. Yeah. And maybe that's unfortunate. They don't they don't bring it to that level for those that want to get. So you know the way they're escalating this out all, all the time is based on you know, we just got today on my drive up here, we just got our United States market forecast for the construction cost of construction in industries. I have yet to read it. I'll be intrigued to see where our economists project the market going for the next, the construction market going for the next year and the next two. Yeah. It'd, be, it'd be interesting. So I'll, I'll, I'll find it, I'll read it, I'll share it with you. Lots of well, that's very good. Yeah. Sure. You know, I mean, one thing I found in my research that was very interesting, and I've seen some uh, sites that maintain construction uh, inflation rates, and typically inflation um, has been, at, at, in, extra, in uh, construction has been a little bit more than inflation, about 1% on average over the long, time, long term. But interestingly enough, during the 09 and uh, great uh, financial crash, yeah. construction costs plummeted 30%. Right. And this is one of the things that happens in that industry is all the profits are gone and the, and the contracts are desperately just trying to get work in the door to keep their businesses open and their people employed. But you know, if you fall into one of those areas, you get an incredible windfall. Yeah. But you know, it's just one of the many factors that go in to tell you going out many, many years really is fraught with yeah. difficulties. And I think that Caitlin's making a very interesting point Caitlin, and that is that we may end up finding this is not going to produce a very satisfactory result, and that we should be just looking on a project by project basis and say, look, if we do this, we're later going to need to do this and this, and those costs and the burdens that that would impose on taxpayers, it's just not going to be fairly estimated. So we'll again see what the expertise of Moores and Cap can produce, and perhaps we can come up with something that everyone's comfortable with, but if not, I, I wouldn't have a problem with taking that approach. No, this gives you a window. Corinne and Michael have their hands raised just in case. I don't know who's looking at the thing, FYI. Uh, Matt or Corinne? Matt want to finish that thought and maybe then Corinne? Oh, no, I was just going to say the, uh, it gives you, that gives you a look at that. If the opportunity cost, if you decide not to do certain elements of the project that you know based on escalation is going to cost X, at the same time, if you figure what your dollar cost is going to be, what that might, what you may have for a future relevant amount that you need to know that is an anticipated expense, you know, that you're going to have to raise for funds to, to pay for that expense. Mm -hmm. So if you say decide not to do one construction element at the, at, the, at the high school, but in 10 years you're going to do it, then you'll know that by discounting those, that money and escalating that project, you can figure out what that in theory, what your cost will be and how much and how much money you're gonna to have to put towards that at that point when you do when you do act, I guess. That's one of the exercises that they gave and they're doing. Yeah. Right now we're looking at that the existing list that came out of the previous studies, the stuff that Herman has added to it. And we're gonna to have to go back and look at the stuff again because David has brought to us all of these cost estimates 
from all of these vendors to look at a lot of the things that he needed to do with the schools. And we're putting that into that full spreadsheet. And we're saying, okay, David, like we did with Chris, is this a zero to five project you need to do, or is this a five to 10 project you need to do? And what cost will reflect whether it's a zero to five or a five, 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 five to 10. So, sure. I guess we did a couple minutes. All right, yeah. Um, I would add that I think it's pretty standard industry knowledge that buildings last a certain amount of years before you have to do a renovation and, you know, total or major replacements. And most buildings, especially in the past, were built to about 40 years. And new buildings are hopefully a little bit more than 40 years, hopefully 40 to 50 or more. Um, but when Harriman did the master plan for each of the seven options last time, I think they showed a, um, some sort of renovation at 20 years and either a major replacement or major cost at 40 years. Um, and I don't think we should shy away from that. I think that's pretty common knowledge. Chuck, maybe you can back me up on this, but um, I know it's hard to forecast out dollars that far, but I don't think we should shy away from representing that because that's based on reality. That, my point was similar. I mean, I don't think we should shy away, but at the same time, we were representing costs that were projected to be 40 years from now, major costs, 40 years out, um, without any sort of discount into current current dollars and that's where all the confusion came from that's how we yeah, saw yeah. one sheet that had option a costing us <laughs> over a billion dollars over the next 20 some 40 years or something like that and but that 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 was the we should show it but in context of what that actually means in today's dollars that that, that was always my issue the the um the other part of the model, which wasn't represented in the master plan, which um, got pretty crazy, I thought, was the capital improvement budget assumptions were, were going up like a million dollars a year to the point where uh, I'd have to pull it up. But it was it was, you know, 20 million dollar a year capital improvement budget by the year 2050 or something like that. And and. Um, way way beyond inflation so um just the point is it wasn't ready for prime time and it needed a lot more work and so i hope we can at least look at to corinne's point we know there's you know with each option in x number of years there should be a future investment in in some other construction new construction or renovation but it just needs to be in you know the, the assumptions behind that and the, the present dollar value of those investments just needs to be reflected. That, that's all I would like to see. That's all I have to say on that. Um, I just wanted to make one point regarding the work of the committee tonight. Um, we have um, a number of to be determined um, values that are going to be considered to be removed um, potentially from the high school. If I understand Lisa's matrix for the last um, meeting. And um, there are a lot of very large numbers here. And uh, we hopefully can come to some conclusion tonight because we need to give this dollar value to um, Mr. Katera and Settle down some numbers, otherwise, we're not going to be able to give an accurate number to the um, in, in the survey sheet that is going to go out. Uh, and we, 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 need to, we need to get you know close to a settled number soon so that we will have you know within a reasonable range of the dollar amounts for each of the uh, B, C, and E. If not. Um, we're going to have a real problem meeting our deadlines and um, getting getting the survey information to the printer. She has um, those two items exactly on her agenda for tonight. Right. She needs the direction yeah. from the building committee. Absolutely. To what's included or what you'd like to do based on the numbers you can see today. Based on that, how much of the high school she has the numbers to back that up with the value she's in. Right. I'm assuming it's worth for the high school and what's being deferred. So that helps that 
that helps tailor the conversation that David Bag Bagazari and I have about okay, if that's being deferred out of the capital project, how do we handle it going forward as part of that? Yeah. So that's what we're doing next. Yeah. So what you decide tonight as it relates to the high school is is, is obviously very key, but it also allows us to go to the next step. Right. So. But I haven't seen the um, presentation tonight, but I'm assuming those to be determined that were in those boxes have, there's no data supplied with that, correct? This is all going to be decided this evening by the committee. What do you mean? What, no, what, what items are you looking for specifically? Well, I mean, she had a, she had a matrix yeah. showing uh, what um, B, C, and E would look like yeah. depending on what was removed from the original yes. amounts. Right. Okay, but those are, right. there's been no amount placeholder put into those. Those are just to be determined. We have placeholder that values for the work as it relates to the high school items, yes. Mm -hmm. So that if you don't include those in the, in the B, C, and E, then here's what they're worth. If you include them, they're worth X, Y, and Z. If you keep them out, we're keeping the value, we know what they're worth. Okay. I hope that helps. It's, well, we'll see. I'll have to see it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. She's done, I think she's done a really good job of her. Okay, okay. because our committees had no discussion about that. About what goes in and what goes out. That's tonight. That's right. Tonight. Okay. I just want to be clear. So, we so there aren't any assumptions made. Okay. We just provided the data for what things cost right. as related to the key items in the school, <clears throat> so that when you make the decisions, you'll know how that impacts the cost of the projects as they're defined as BC and E. So they're almost like they're ad hocs. Here's BC and E. Here's yeah. the cost. Here's that. Here's the high school items based on those values for each one of those. What do you feel comfortable adding back in or not adding? Right. And okay. you tell us, and then that's our marching orders, and we work that okay. direction going forward. But it also allows you to present in the forum here's the value of those items that we're you know, addressing. Here's what okay. we're <laughs> well, anyway, it's critically important that we try to you know, reach some type of a decision <laughs> this yes. evening in order to provide this information yep. to the public at, in a timely fashion, both in the Terms of the insert that will go with the survey and and, and generally going forward up leading up to the yep. meeting on the fourth of April. Yeah, very good. Are there any other comments on long term costs? <clears throat> and any uh, other um, again issues here? I just got a couple questions. Um, Joe Patera, uh, he sounds like a hell of a great guy, smart and everything, but does anybody check his work? I'm going to just say I had one of my best estimators, the best, and he missed some stuff and made some errors. Does anybody check his work? Does he have a well, all of the, and Matt knows this, <laughs> because all of the work that we've received, I've gone over and verified the numbers, and we've okay. discovered some uh, transcription errors yeah. and actually some actual dollar errors and calculations that resulted from laws and spreadsheets. So we've double checked to the extent that we can that, okay. that data. I wouldn't, you know, go beyond that. It was really just verification of data that's already there and then transcribed into, you know, other formats. Okay. But we have checked that thoroughly. Yeah, and I know a lot of the debt service work, I, I think that's kind of my okay. extra, <clears throat> extra fun side of what I do. And uh, I, I look at that pretty calm because because the last thing you want to do is bring something out to prime time, right? And have someone say, "Geez, you really messed up. That was a thirty-year, uh, thirty-year versus the twenty-year. You're based your your debt service on the twenty, and making sure that you have those, you know, your mortgage constants, all that stuff, all lined up." He, it's yeah. I know Larry and I both have gone over and fine tuned mm -hmm. all those things. So, when I shoot that down too, yeah. with the estimates that we got from Harriman, we actually got them on Monday. Yeah, Monday, Tuesday. Tuesday. No, we actually got our, our, our early. I think we got them on Friday, and we spent the weekend, and our team spent the weekend looking at them and comparing them. And we did find a couple of those things, and that's why we're doing the second look. Okay. So now the information that they're providing and we're bringing forward, we feel com 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 comfortable and all lined up and signing off with that. Okay. We saw some diff differences. We dis disagreed on some of the percentages for markups and contingencies and things like that, and we discussed it and weighed it. It's Harriman's choice to. To present it to you how they feel most comfortable, but they were good. We're, we're working on this book. Are they going to give us a chance to look at their big reviews and everything? See, because you're at a conceptual estimate, right. it's not you can't bring this up to the marketplace and ask. That's what I, 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 I no, That's, okay. that's, that's my next question. Like, yeah. I've always worked with private investors and foreign yeah. governments, 
And like we got a price out there for the world, we're going to spend a hundred million dollars on our sure. school. So how do you go for competitive bid? When you know, everybody knows what we got the budget that they come in under. That's, that's the essence of my day day to day job for 30, 30, 35 years. Yeah. It's what you do. You have to come up in order for you as this committee and for the, the citizens to agree to how much they want to spend on a project. We have to do our work and because the essence that it's all public, it gets out there. Now, competitive bidding comes in because you see how many people are interested in bidding it. And the ones that want the good work and want the work, they'll be more competitive in their right. rates. They'll get the better work. We can't control that, but we at least know a budget going in you know, so that when the estimates come in, we're able to compare it to apples to apples. Okay. Okay. okay, that's where we are, that's where they are, and we'll go, go from there. Okay, thank you. Part of the analysis. Anybody else with any additional questions or comments? We have uh, John B with his hand up on the, as the public attendee, Mr. Chair. Yep. John, your, your mic should be uh, live now, sir. So my hand was raised for public comment. I don't know if this is the appropriate time for that. Yes. Yes, but yes, John, go ahead. Great. So finance committee has spent a lot of time on a lot of topics, but it's, um, it seems to have missed some on finance. As I look at the current town budget, the current debt service costs are still far below the metrics for a AAA rating. Is there any, going to be any work or any recommendation around saving in advance in the current and future town budgets that will minimize the tax impact and spread the cost over more years? This would have a real impact. Is this gonna get looked at? Is there gonna be any recommendation or work on this approach? We could raise up a fund that would still keep us below that metric on debt service to, to expenses and really limit the tax impacts starting now. We've got a couple of years. As well as, is there any work looking at private financing, what it might take, what the time frame would be, and how much you might expect to raise? So those are things that I would hope that the Finance Committee would look at before we went forward with a financing plan. Okay. No, John, the council had a discussion on that during the budget process, and I believe they'll be taking that uh, overall concept up again on the 22nd and possibly on the 23rd as well. Uh, right, so my question is for this finance committee. Okay. Is that uh, in the remit of this finance. finance committee? Is that in the remit of this? I don't, I don't know. I don't, I, I would think it's a town council issue, but. Right. Well, you could show that the ballot would work. Uh, one at a time, guys. One at a time, please. I, you know, my thought is, that the concept is a good concept and we discussed it and we've had joint discussions with uh, the committee with the town councils who've worked on this long-term plan, but this clearly is in the purview of the council, not this committee. And that's where we sent it, as part of the budget process. Right. Good, good. And then uh, uh, Tim, uh, Tim has his hand up. Tim, if you want to, your, your mic should be live any time. Yeah, I just, uh... I think the town council is very interested in these co these concepts that have been coming up about saving money in the in every budget to build a fund. Uh, why we haven't done it in the past, John, I don't know, but I know it's of interest in the current council to do it moving forward. Whether or not it's a good time to do it this year, with the impact that revaluations had on a lot of people's taxes, or if we want to try to present as positive an environment. Uh, for the referendum uh, in November, at least my feeling, I don't think we, we've come to any kind of conclusion, but it might not be the greatest timing to start something that, like that this year, but I know the council uh, is interested in, in doing some of that moving forward. I mean- Is there any written work on this today? No, not at the moment. I just wanted to just because um, I, we in the in the scope of work for the committee, it does say explore funding options and alternative funding sources. And so while I do understand, of course, that the town council at the end of the day is the, the one who gets to ultimately make a decision about whether or not to start a fund like this, there is something to be said for the fact that no matter what decision we put forward, we have a tens of millions of dollars school problem. And I think it would 
make the town and i'm speaking of this as a as a citizen of cape elizabeth because it is the the town that makes the town council that makes its decision not the school board or the sbc as a citizen of the town i think it would make us it would make the town look responsible to 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 show that we're clearly aware of what ever it is being an incredibly large investment and attempting to 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 mit mitigate the steep tax impact in in some way possible. I mean, we can't say that we don't know it's coming at this point. Can I, can I say something? Matt, yeah. can I, can I, can uh, I can you, on that, Matt? Number Go one, ahead, the Eddie. person on the iPhone, Thomas, can you speak up or talk into your phone? That's how Tim comes this <laughs> Could you not hear me, Penny? No. Oh. You can, um, it was do, like do, you're away from your microphone. Okay. Um, so to, re, to respond real quickly to Caitlin, uh, we were reminded at the beginning of this town council with a letter from uh, a, a lawyer that the school board had, had utilized dated 2018, clearly identifying for the town council that the school board is in fact responsible for the school buildings. So. Caitlin, I, I do think that's a, that's more in your area of responsibility, the school buildings, than it is in the town council. So it's something you guys may need to re readdress. I think that that's a pretty radical thing to say, to check with. I mean, I just mean like to say that the school board, I that seems like a conversation that maybe Councillor Reiniger and Elizabeth Seifries, the, the chair of the school board would need to have with each other because I would think that you guys would agree with me that the, the town council is, the, is the, the bearer of the major financial decisions in town. And I think that it would be seen quite much as overstepping if the school board recommended uh, creating a coffer for the schools. I think that would, I don't think that would go over well at all. If I well, just a very, yes, go ahead. Matt, 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 please, just, just as a quick point of reference, I just want folks to have an idea. If you're, if you're going to do that type of approach, you need to set a lot of money aside. And I'm not talking about a million dollars or $2 million this year. If you're looking at a somewhere between a 60 to a hundred million dollar bond, you're talking about, 10 or $15 million you need to set aside to make any real impact as far as your debt service is going to go. I'm not trying to be a smarty pants, but you can think about the same things if you're buying a car. And if it's a $50,000 car and you're going to put $12,000 away, that's you're going to have a payment of X amount of dollars. If you put in another $5,000 to that, it's not going to make a big difference on what your monthly debt service is going to be. So let's say you take out a car loan for 30 box over seven years if you put in there if you put that in it's gonna or let's say no sorry it's gonna be about seven hundred dollars over six years if you put it in another five grand of that you're gonna be talking about six hundred and fifty dollars it's not gonna make a major impact as far as what your debt service when you're talking about three or four million dollars a year for your debt services got to be I just I, I don't want anybody doing that thinking that the misconception that if you set aside a million dollars in this year's tax agreement and a million dollars next year and a million dollars after that, that you're really paying down a lot. What you're paying down is probably some of your soft costs. And and, and that's enough. I just want you to be sober about this and not think that that's going to do it. Because when that, when that comes on, you're talking about, now you're talking about a couple, maybe a nickel or 10 cents on your tax rate. I just, I just want you to understand that. That's mm -hmm. all. Can I, can I say something in that? You can help me with this. Part of what I looked at as we started working on our comprehensive uh, CIP is that we were going to put a plan together that identified what it what it looked like across the town for investment, capital improvement investment over a 10 year period. And that with each one of them, we would identify a fund, the funding source for that. And, and on much of our CIP as we laid it out for 2025, 25, 26, yeah. um, is that, we have dollars that we can access through um, 
through our, our TIF, we have dollars we can access to grants, we have dollars we can access to other means. And we talked about how do we take and look at, and this may sound minuscule, but look at uh, diverting um, the, uh, some of the Fort Williams fees into a, um, a fund that then you start allocating to some of your CIP. So if we can look at part of our CIP and know we're funding it, then it frees up those other dollars to start looking at major infrastructure investment. And that's the way I, I kind of look at it, is that it's not about putting dollars in to pay for um, $100 million schools. It's about putting dollars in to say, let's pay those other expenses uh, with these dollars that we've set aside for other funding sources. I don't know, that's the way I look at yeah. it. Uh, Tim Thompson, you still have your hand up. Did you want to add some additional comment? Uh, no, no. Sorry. Okay, no. all right. Are we at a point? Is there anyone else from the public here that would like to speak? We, Mr. Chairman, we have Elizabeth back here. Um, I think Al, and then there's uh, and then Chris, uh, Scott, and then John on the uh, virtual side. Okay. Oh, um, Elizabeth Chairman, 19 Shandy Road. Um, I just, I wanted to go back to the discussion about uh, giving information to people about the costs, the long-term costs of each of the options that Harriman presented. Um, and I, I understand it. Our owner rep has said that that often is a number that doesn't include the future costs or the future revenue that we'll use to pay for it. Um, but if it's a, if our owner of Rev is saying this is a, an industry standard way to be able to give people information to compare across different options, I think that that would be valuable information for decision makers on the committee, on the school board, on the town council, in the community to know. Um, and right now that information is missing. I, I hope it, it sort of comes back with our finalized options. And there's still value, even though we don't know, nobody knows the future, they are comparable at whatever number they are across the three options, um, if they're calculated the same way. So there's still a lot of value there. And if you if you tell somebody, I, you can buy these three houses, one costs $100, one costs $200, one costs $300, but the $100 house needs $500 worth of work, that's valuable information about making a decision about which house to buy. And I, I think... If you don't meaningfully provide that information to people, they don't get to make an informed decision. So I, I hope that makes it into the communications and the and the hands of the people who you're asking to make this decision. Thanks. I did have a comment. Is there anybody on, on yeah. the online that needs to speak? Yeah, we have uh, all, all four hands on these online too, so. <laughs> Uh, well, I, I just want to, Al Ronald, real quick, I just want to express my frustration, a little bit frustrated. I didn't realize the meetings, the time has changed. It did, it did, and this has happened to me before, where I arrived and the first time it happened to me, there was no meeting here at all. It had completely canceled. So my process is, when I know that there's a date out there, I, I load it in my calendar, and then the week of, we get the email and they confirm, but apparently that's not good enough. And so I'm just expressing some frustration. I know meeting times change. It's, that's that's normal. But the communication method is uh, emails passive, so it, it arrives in my inbox and I see it. But apparently, the change this week, you've got to go to the website to see that that the meeting has changed. I think we need to be consistent about doing that because um, I don't have time to take any. I missed the first half hour, so I have no comment about the content what went on. But I just did want to express my frustration. The timing of notice or how it's noticed because I, I missed it. I was waiting for four o'clock when I could have been here at 3.30. Right. Did you know the 5.30? I, I know, I know that, because that, 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 was, that was in the email. But uh, So I don't know what the process is, but that, that, that should be addressed because that's happened to me three times during the course of the SBAC meetings. 
And uh, so I should have known better, but somebody who's a newbie wouldn't know that to, to look. So I think it needs to be looked at either consistently send an email with changes or urge people to, to check the website for the, the latest information. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Uh, Chris Gorski. Chris, you should be, your microphone should be live now, sir. All right, uh, Chris Gorski, 28 Farm Hill Road. Um, yeah, I just want to reiterate the comment earlier about the actual financing um, that I was kind of hoping would be delved into more. Um, I think, yeah, I, I think, Matt, you're exactly right. We are about, in about a $40 million hole, as we've seen from the school board, um, from the, I'm sorry, not the school board, from Harriman's a plan of saying there's $40 million of gap in repair that needs to be done to these buildings or there's building that needs to be done. And we have the turf is gets a nice little fund where money is, is stocked away every year, but nothing else in the town actually has a manageable fund that we put money into over time to pay for these things. So, I mean, we're, we're kind of lying to the town saying, oh yeah, we don't need any money. Here's your new tax rate. But next year we're going to sock you with a really big high rate that we knew we knew we needed to take more money from you this year. We knew last year. We knew the year before. We knew five years before that that the buildings needed work. We've been taught this town's been talking about it, you know, for many, many years. And so the fact that we haven't ever started a fund to put money away, and, and it's not a million, it's five, it's 10 million a year. Um, it's not going to be a fun number to to swallow. Uh, but when you look at our our new mill rate compared to Cumberland County we're much lower than um, other towns in Cumberland County um, just because we haven't done a proper evaluation for over 10 years and we missed out on some giant spikes in housing value. Yeah. It means it's going to be a, a little bit of a gut punch for some people this year. Um, but that's the reality. We just didn't do the work to keep up with reality. Um, and so I think we really, and I, and I understand where there's arguments about who's, who's responsible to do it. Um, I'll tell this group, I'll tell the school board, I'll tell town council, all of you have have the ability to suggest it and push it forward. You should do that um, because as members of the town, as, as people interested in, in this committee and, and wanting to see change and productive, productive things funded and taken care of in this town, we'd like to see slow budgets be built, but 10 million over each year, not a hundred million at one time. And if we had started putting money away years ago, had started planning at the beginning of this conversation, there wouldn't be a giant tax increase. There'd be a modest tax increase over many years, um, which is how I would hope a town would run. Um, so that that's the kind of thing I'd like to see change just as a holistic, holistic thing of we have almost no debt in this town. We have such a low, um, low amount of money on hand to fund projects like this. That, that was a big shocker to me when I when I understood all that and then started digging into how other towns operate. Um, it's all new to me. And it seems like we've missed a big opportunity here to get ahead of that and to ease the impact we're going to make on everyone's personal income and and, and taxes when they have to pay that bill. Because uh, they don't pay it this year, they're going to pay it next year or the following year. Um, it's going to come due. We can't just, we keep kicking it down the road. So we either start putting away a little today, a little more tomorrow, a little more the next day, or we got to come up with a big fat check in a few years. Uh, thank you. And next, Mr. Chair, we'll have uh, Scott Mazuza. Hi, thank you very much. <clears throat> I'm Scott Mazuzan, 270 Fowler Road. Um, first, I just want to say thank you. I'm really glad to hear uh, the committee earnestly discussing, um, talking about, you know, building lifespan and subsequent long-term investments. As everyone else has said already, this is crucial information for voters to understand return on investment um, with so much effort being put into the survey that's going out uh, next month. Um, I think it's really crucial that voters have access to this information as soon as possible. Um, you know, as, as it, as these numbers were discussed today, what I'm hearing is a lot of disagreement about um, what, what inflation rate is appropriate to use for construction costs um, and how that relates to, you know, consumer prices and, and, and purchasing power um, for everyday citizens. Um, if, if we can't come to an agreement on what a good growth, growth rate or inflation rate for construction costs should be, then I don't see why we can't just communicate these costs in, in present 
day dollars and 2024 dollars so that people understand to elizabeth's point earlier you know if if we spend 70 million dollars this year we can expect to spend another 70 million dollars in 2024 dollars 10 years from now period uh before inflation um and and that is information that people can use and and make decisions based upon um and one last point, I, d I just think, you know, there, there was a comment about the astronomical costs of some of the long term projections. Um, it, if you go back in time and look at the Courier articles about the two school projects that was pitched back in the 90s, I want to say it was somewhere between 20 and 30 million dollars. And I'm sorry, but I don't have that at my fingertips. Um, but a $20 million project in the 90s versus a uh, almost $200 million two school project this year, you know, that's, that's almost a 10 X um, growth. So, you know, these are, these are real numbers. And when you, when you wait 30 or 40 years to do something, those astronomical projections have a way of, of coming true. Um, some years are down, some years are up, but you know, when we're talking about generational delays um, we can expect huge price increases. Um, so thank you for everything. I'm really looking forward to seeing these numbers um, and uh, I'll leave it at that. Thanks. I'm Cole Boucher, Mr. Chairman. Can you call your microphone so now be live? Hi, Nicole Boucher, 14 Grover Road. I don't have anything additional to add that it, someone hasn't already said, but I did want to point out the um, it's not the right time to start saving phrase is really triggering because that's the phrase that we've heard for the last 30 years and has put us in this position. So I would encourage you to look at our mill rates, compare it to other counties around us and, and see if we've been underfunding this town and, and look at what we can do to stop gap that. And I don't think not, not saving money right now is the right choice for that because it we can see it just compounds the problem and leaves the next generation to handle it or die mm. underneath it. And, uh, and then finally, Mr. Chairman, we have uh, Mr. Volts again. John, you might shoot hot, sir. Yes, thank you. I just wanted to make an additional comment in terms of what saving for now does. Because of the way municipal bonding works, the highest initial cost is in the upfront years in the year you bond it. The idea of saving now is to clip the top of that curve so that when people talk about it, it's incorrect to talk about it this way, but they do. They talk about that big jump in those first years. The goal of saving now and every year until we float that bond is to clip the top of that curve. And that will make a big difference if you put aside even a million or $2 million a year until the bond floats. It will clip the top of that and reduce the total percent tax increase that people talk about. It will make a big difference. Model it out and you will see. Thank you, John. And that is it, Mr. Chairman. Okay, well, thank you all. And uh, I guess we'll see you all at uh, 5.30. 30. Thanks, sir. Yeah. Thank you.